Um, I'd like to welcome Jonathan Beecher from Concur, uh, who is a business development manager over there. And he is going to do much of the talking today, um, talk a little bit about Concur, uh, the principles, and then actually take us through the, the product itself. Um, you've probably sat in on one of these webinars before. We, we run them regularly, run them monthly. And our objective really is to add value to the relationship between you as our customers and prospects uh, and ourselves. So our objectives really are to, to educate about Dynamics GP and the new features, um, new products that we come across. Concare is a good example. It's a, it's a product that's been around for a while, but we've got a number of clients using it at the moment. Um, and that's, that's sort of one of the objectives of, of the webinars that we run. The second is really to try and add some value to the businesses that you've got uh, in terms of increasing control, uh, increasing uh, visibility, reducing cost, and try to increase efficiency by introducing these products to yourselves. Uh, and can care what the new product uh, to ourselves also definitely fits into to the second category in terms of adding value. So we're delighted to welcome Jonathan Long and let, let us show us, uh, tell us a bit more about his product and show us how it works. Um, we have a number of clients already using Concare, and they are there is a variety of points that we can use to integrate with Concare. Um, some of you will already have products such as Integration Manager or Smart Connect, um, and we've in, we've implemented and integrated Concare through both of those touch points. Um, those of you that don't have um, those products, they're options for you but there is other third party um, solutions being built to bridge the gap between Concare and, and Dynamics GP. So should Concare look attractive today? Should it be something that you want to progress with? Um, don't worry about that integration, it's already been done and uh, we can work with you to deliver that in the best format appropriate, that's appropriate. Um, just a very quick uh, point on housekeeping before I hand over to, to Jonathan. Um, you're all in mute mode at the moment. We've got uh, nine attendees on the call. Um, so rather than everybody talking at once, should you have a question, you can post questions through your GoToWebinar control panel on the right-hand side. And subject to the relevance of the question, depending on where we are in the actual webinar, what I'll do is I can ask the question then, or I can make a note of it and save it to the end, and we can ask Jonathan towards the end. But um, that's me. I hope you enjoy the webinar. My contact details are on the screen at the moment. Feel free to drop me a line or give me a call uh, if Concare is uh, of additional interest. I'm sure Jonathan will be more than happy to sort out a session one-on-one -on -one, uh, subsequently. Over to you, Jonathan. Brilliant. Thank you uh, for the introduction, Matt. Really appreciate uh, you setting it up and uh, the opportunity to talk to you uh, all on the uh, webinar today. Um, just to introduce myself, I work on the partnerships for Concare UK. Um, and work very closely with Advantage with some of the existing customers we've already had. Um, so, you know, fantastic opportunity to uh, talk to you today. In terms of what I'm going to cover, um, really I wanted to just highlight some of the areas of, of uh, pain and challenge that we tend to see when it comes to manual expenses. Some of the areas of return that you might find within your business in in looking at a more automated uh, process for expenses. Um, then to give you um, a bit of an idea of, um, you know, kind of who Concur are um, and some of the, the ways that um, you, you can use our product, I'll then show you the mobile app um, and, and how to process an expense and, and capture a, a receipt from the mobile. And then finally talk about um, a recent uh, custom success and, and Im implementation we ran here in the UK. And I'm, I'm guessing quite a lot of people um, on the call are going to be in uh, you know, the finance team, heads of finance, and a lot of the challenges we see, um, no doubt you also see in terms of um, employee productivity. So one of the, uh, I think it was a Forrester report um, last year that, that said on average an employee in a business is spending two hours a month processing, um, you know, photocopying expenses, taking all the kind of receipts at the end of the month having to manually enter either in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet or a web portal um, the, uh, 
the supplier information, the uh, attendees, if it was an, you know, an entertainment expense, the amount, and, and you know, if, if they're good at it, the VAT. Um, so all that's kind of productivity uh, that's lost out of the business from typically revenue generating employees, be it uh, billing consultants, uh, engineers, through to, to salespeople. So you know, it ultimately impacts um, you know, your top line. And then it's a, a double-edged sword when it comes to productivity in that you've got your own finance team that are often struggling with uh, you know, a mountain of, of paper receipts, um, having to manually check whether the receipt reconciles with uh, the, the actual expense claim in an Excel sheet. Um, if there's any exceptions, if, if things aren't reconciling, having to push that back to the line manager and in turn the end employee. So, you know, ultimately, there's really slow uh, reimbursements because of that sort of chain of process of having to physically hand paper, uh, paper-based reports and receipts back to employees. Um, I think importantly, as well, to know is that uh, the uh, you know, when you're using a manual system and you've got an Excel, you know, an Excel sort of printout, you've got um, a lot of paper-based uh, receipts. You can't actually you know, take take insight, take information from the you know, the data that you're capturing, um, and that means that the the VAT that um, your business is likely <clears throat> sorry your business is uh, is likely incurring um, ultimately isn't reclaimed in its in the you know the fullest amount. So we we find a lot of customers losing out on uh, potential VAT, be it local or kind of international VAT if you're um, transacting or traveling um, internationally. And and the other thing as well to note, um, you know, you've got uh, employees that are making spend decisions on behalf of the company, um, you know. And those spend decisions are in their own hands. Um, or, you know, you might set out a expense policy that they agree to at the start of their employment, but because expenses and the, and the policy is never at the forefront of of the uh, business culture, it's never at the you know it's, it's never the sort of fabric of their kind of day to day um, sort of business. It often leaves. Uh, it's, it's often sort of falls by the wayside. Um, so you know policies or you know, preferred suppliers that you might have, um, total amount of uh, uh, stipend or um, per diem expense can, can't be tracked or is, is often spent out of policy. So you've got the you know you've got the actual expense itself and the the cost associated to that. That's typically uh, you know we see eight to twelve percent of um, your overall business expenditure. Um, obviously, the more customer facing, um, the more uh, people on the road, the higher that level of um, expenditure would be. But typically, eight to twelve percent is a, is is what we see as the second largest uh, line item of expenditure within the business after. Um, after payroll costs, um, but for, aside from the expense, you know, a lot of the reasons why you might be using a manual system today is that the the costs associated to processing that expense um, and and the, the kind of lost revenue associated to that is sort of felt across the business, but you can never really you know allocate um, the cost associated to such a manual um, a manual process today. So, you know, I've covered the the lost productivity from your sales team, from your engineers, from your consultants, from your researchers. Um, that all kind of ultimately impacts the the bottom line and being able to um, you know recapture all of that loss you know, the lost hours of people you're likely paying um, you know, handsome salaries for. Um, moving them away from simple data entry tasks and moving them into customer facing activities um, ultimately impacts uh, the uh, your revenue growth. The other areas uh, around VAT and VAT reclaims, you know, particular area around mileage and fuel for mileage receipts, we see a lot of companies because of, of how burdensome the, the process of having to um, tie in fuel for mileage receipts and, 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 and Mileage trips um, as expense items. Um, the, the the VAT due back to your organisation um, is never really um, processed because of the the burden it puts on on your finance team. Um, 
and from a from an internal finance finance perspective, you know, a real kind of challenge you might find uh, is that you know you've got finance te- members of your finance team that are spent on kind of low level data entry tasks when you might have strategic growth objectives, have regulatory uh, you know, audits, have sort of international um, issues or ERP upgrades to to work on. So to be able to reallocate uh, resource from you know, low value added tasks and move them into more strategic projects that are a priority for your business, um, we found really helps the overall success of the finance team and how you're viewed um, by the business. And just to, just to highlight from a productivity standpoint, I was actually talking to um, an engineering firm a couple of weeks back and, and we sort of looked at the Forrest report that I mentioned earlier, the fact that uh, two hours a month are lost um, per person every month processing expenses. Um, and they looked across their entire um, engineering base. They're an engineering firm. They've got multiple offices, uh, you know, in, across Europe, where their engineers are travelling. They're um, having to pay for flights, accommodation when they're on client site. They're all, you know, they're keeping those receipts and processing them at the end of the month. They're all spending two hours. And the, the FD reckoned that across those 300 engineers. They're actually wasting 75 working days per month. That's not including the, the dedicated resource they had for processing expenses. Um, 75 working days lost out of the business on you know, quite highly paid engineers. So it's a, you know, it a huge challenge for this business as they wanted to scale internationally, as they wanted to optimize their um, employees' times, uh, employees' time. To, to, to look at that process and, and see kind of you know how they could streamline it a, a bit better. The other important thing to to note, I mentioned from a policy standpoint before, but those three hundred engineers are all making their own spend decisions. Every time they fly, every time they incur an expense, every time they go for a meal and and uh, you know, pay for accommodation, they're doing it off their own backs or we're doing it off their own backs and, and you know it means they choose their own suppliers, they might go BA because they're on a, a point at scheme, even though the company has a preferred supplier that's sort of cheaper like EasyJet. Um, they might be, you know, going to uh, the sort of the best hotel they could find, or they, you know, it might be incurring expenses in terms of entertainment that um, from a you know, legislative standpoint, you need to address and, and identify who is actually attending and whether that um, counts as a bribe or not. So they're making their own spend decisions and finance are only ever you know, after the fact. They're, they're only ever after the spend decisions being made. And, and also the employee might not be, be doing it um, you know, with a hidden motive of, of getting the best suppliers or sorry, the, you know, the best uh, airfare. Um, they just might not know what their their overall policy is. So to to, to put a tool in place that um, flags to them on a continual and ongoing basis what uh, the policy is and whether they've exceeded their limit um, can ultimately bring down those those individual spend decisions in line with the policy that uh, you uh, initially set out for them. And if you think about uh, the way business is done today, you think about the way uh, employees want to work. You know, it reflects really the way we we all operate as as consumers. And you look at banking and and how it's changed over the past, you know, even kind of decade, where you know if, if there's any uh, account problem that you had any sort of money needed to transfer, you'd have to you had to go physically to the to the bank. Um, now you've got um, you know, Santander mobile app, you've got um, Barclays Pingit where you can transfer money on the go uh, in real time anywhere you are. Um, so it gives power back in the hands of, of individuals to, to run their business and run their um, you know, run their kind of money exactly kind of how they want want to. The same you know, completely true for expenses. Uh, you might be using paper-based uh, forms, Excel spreadsheets, portals. Ultimately you're requiring the employee and uh, their approver to be in the office to have to process that. Um, not only from a capture perspective, that means you lose on um, you know, perhaps receipts and, and there might be kind of missing receipt information there, 
but also you know, it, it lengthens the reimbursement time. So to have a, a tool, to have a, a system where you know you push the the opportunity back into the hands of uh, employees to run their business anywhere they are, uh, wherever they are, uh, from their mobile phone. Um, is kind of hugely important and frees them from having to uh, I think uh, I think you uh, just lost me there I um, hope everybody can hear me okay yep. so where concur comes in uh, oh, brilliant. okay where concur comes in and just to give you an overview of concur we're a spend management platform it's cloud-based um, software as a service enabled um, and all native to the mobile phone and we cover three main areas. There's travel, where you're able to uh, book and manage business travel, uh, be it airfares, be it um, hotels. Um, then there's the concur expense, and that's primarily what we're known for. You might have um, known as a, as, a, as a sort of an expense tool. And now you can, again, kind of use a mobile app and, and a, a web-based application to process all of the travel um, as well as any other expense. Um, and finally, we have Concur Invoice. And, and any supplier invoice that you're uh, receiving into the business, PO or non-PO, that's paper-based today, that much like you know, manual, expense, uh, manual uh, paper-based expenses, um, that you're having to sort of key into your accounting package, um, being able to sort of take those in, digitize, and, and automate, um, and put a workflow behind it gives you more visibility. So, ultimately, you know, our, our philosophy is an end-to-end -end spend management platform that gives you, you know, 360 degree uh, view of all the spend that your employees um, are incurring. That's all that kind of decentralized spend that you know sometimes. Um, you can't control, you know, and it's only after the fact that um, you know finance are alerted to it. I'm just going to show you quickly uh, the mobile app and how you go about processing uh, I mean, an expense. Our um, our mobile app's actually available um, on every main um, operating system. So I'm using an iPhone today. You can freely download the Concur app. Um, on Apple App Store, you've got um, Android, Windows, and BlackBerry um, applications as well. Um, Concur is actually the most widely used uh, app in business. Um, we 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 have 30 million users of Concur uh, globally. And if you can look in um, the uh, mobile screen that I've I've pulled up there, we've got two apps. Uh, there's Concur and Expensive. I'm just going to click on the expense app. Now, expense is our OCR technology. Um, it ultimately uh, sort of scans the receipt that you uh, take a photo of. It takes in the information and automatically pre-populates an expense item. So, you know, it removes the data entry that, again, you have to do on the road and just makes the, the whole user experience a lot more easier. It means that expenses are no longer a hassle. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, a sort of boy's toy in that, you know, it's quite nifty and and... And, and it's sort of easy to use. So I'm just going to take a photo of a, uh, a receipt, uh, sort of a train ticket there. A very expensive train ticket, I might add. Um, so that takes about a minute to upload, and our technology will scan all the data within that, um, come up with a uh, supplier um, supplier name. Um, the value and location. So that will take about a minute, after which it sort of sits within my uh, the main Concur app, uh, which you can see is here. As you can see there, there's um, there's a couple of different sections, but important to note is is just how easy to use it is. How you know the, the user experience is is really sort of consumer grade. You know, it you know looks and feels like Facebook or um, you know instant instant messenger. Um, again, making it easy for the end business user to adopt and for the line managers to approve on the go. So you can see there's a, there's a couple of different uh, rows there. There's trips, expenses, expense claims, and approvals. So you know, not only can I book uh, travel, book a t uh, accommodation um, on the road, I can process my expenses, look at the outstanding exp expense claims that I have, 
And then if I'm a you know, line manager, look at the approvals that are still in my queue, um, and that will all come up as, uh, as notifications. I'm just going to show you how I go about booking a hotel and a, a sort of nifty feature um, there. So I've just typed um, you know, that I wanted to uh, just have a look. Uh, look for a hotel in uh, the end of July in London. Now that's going to search, um, you know, much like Expedia, the uh, total kind of inventory of, uh, of um, all the kind of hotels in London. And what you can see actually is that it's pulled up a list and there's kind of stars associated to that. Uh, and if you look at the top one, the, um, the inter interesting thing to know there is that it's actually pulled up a hotel in Slough. That's because Concur used to have an office in Slough and we negotiated a better rate um, for that particular hotel. So, you know, although I might want a, a, a hotel in London, it's the, the system is, is sort of giving me the information and pushing me to make a you know, more informed um, sort of spend decision. Um, and if I go into there as well, I can I can also kind of look at um, information on rooms. If you notice, while at the top there's a price to beat, um, price to beat 185 pounds. That means that the the most expensive hotel I can select is 185 pounds. And if I if I select a hotel that's cheaper than that, then um, you can see I can earn 69 points for that uh, the first room. And what that um, what that means is that at the end of the year, um, if I've made good spend decisions and, and chosen better suppliers that my company prefers, I can actually use those points for my own personal travel. So it's a great way of gamifying that um, you know, that experience, um, pushing employees in a sort of non-invasive way to, to better spend decisions. Just to go back to um, expense it, um, I think I just got a notification to say it had uploaded. Hilariously, um, it's come back as an airfare, so it's not always 100% accurate. Um, but you can make corrections. Um, so I'd, you know, I'd want to sort of look at changing that expense type. Um, click save, and then that I can click export and goes straight into my Concur uh, interface. But if you were to create an expense item from, uh, if you were to create an expense item, oops, sorry. There we go. If, we, if you were to create an expense item from the uh, the main Concur mobile app, you click the right uh, right button there, add a receipt. Now I can take a photo of that. That's captured the receipt uh, and means from a finance perspective, um, all the receipt images are there ready for me to um, you know, audit and scroll through on my uh, desktop at a later date. I then enter in, enter in the amount. Now, if, it, if that was a kind of food item, um, you know, food item that I'd taken away from a kind of takeaway, um, that would capture the VAT automatically and calculate that VAT automatically um, in aggregate over the month so that you as a sort of, uh, Within finance, can can calculate what you're due back as a business and report on that, and have the have the receipts that it pertains to there to hand, so that you know if, if you ever do have have to get audited, um, you know you've got the VAT calculations tied to receipts and can you know report on it in real time. So I'm just going to um, select a taxi, shuttle, train, and click save. And that's added to my outstanding um, outstanding expense items. Um, and what I can do then is, if I was to click at the bottom, add to claim, I could select a number of those and add to a uh, individual claim. And then that that in turn, once I click, once I uh, submit that claim, is, is sent to my line manager for approval. I'll show you um, a submitted claim that I've done. Quick um, question, Jonathan, if I may. Um, just a quick yeah, question. Yeah, of um, course. Question about uh, connectivity. Does it need to be connected real time, or uh, if you as as happens often with my EE service, uh, I have no service. Yeah. So it, will it batch up that that information then pass that through it subsequently? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great question actually, and you know we, we find that the often in, in you know, sales or kind of you, you know you're consulting, you're you're on a train with really bad reception, and you've got a bit of downtime, and you want to uh, take a photo of a receipt and do your expenses there. So we totally can. Uh, work offline. What would happen is um, you take the photo of the receipt, create an expense item, and then that would sit in your user profile ready to be uploaded at a later date um, when you do have internet um, or you know, phone connectivity. Okay. Does, that, does that make sense? Yeah, super. Thank you. Brilliant. So what I did, um, I, I looked at um, an outstanding claim, and as you can note at the top right there, um, it's got a little credit card icon. So we actually in, um, integrate with 150 different credit, uh, corporate credit cards. So if you are issuing, issuing corporate credit cards, one of the challenges around that is not knowing on an intra-month perspective um, what your total outstanding expense liabilities are. Um, so what we're able to do is within 48 to 72 hours, every transaction that I make on my American Express lands in my user, uh, user profile. Um, and it means that from a uh, compliance and, and fraud risk perspective, the receipt and transaction value and supplier is all there in an expense item ready for me to um, just attach a receipt. It also means you know, as an end user, I'm you know, way more likely to use um, the, the expense capabilities accurately and um, you know, on a, on a um, timely basis because I've got all the information there ready to, ready to hand. So we just timed all that. Um, and what I can do as well is um, look at the receipt. Um, so that's already tied to the um, to the um, expense item. So that pretty much kind of takes you through the overall um, capture part of the expense item. Um, and once once I've uh, processed that from a, an end user perspective, the line manager is approved. Then in finance, um, and you get a, a, a admin portal um, to review all of those expense items. You can uh, slice and dice the data, so look at airfares. You can run reports based off you know, whether the certain business units or divisions that um, tend to spend more on expenses and if there's uh, violations to uh, particular policies. Um, on the web portal as well, we also have a Google Maps integration, so you can um, submit mileage um, more accurately. The other kind of important thing to know is you, is you might look at um, the expense management market is, is how to future-proof your investments. So you know we're, we're very much an open ecosystem and, and work very well with third parties. Uh, Advantage is a great partner of ours, and we have a number of other platform partners that integrate um, into and, and utilize the data that you capture uh, within Concur. Um, an example being um, VAT Reclaim. Companies. So, you know, if, if you do get supplier invoices with, for example, German uh, sales tax on them, and you're due, you know, due to kind of the bilateral uh, agreements the UK and Germany has, you're able to uh, get sort of reclaim that back. But but obviously you need a kind of local knowledge of how to process it in Germany, and often it's it's burdensome on your team and having to do that. So we partner with a number of VAT reclaim uh, companies that, that process that for you um, and process all the data that you're capturing within Concur in an automated way, um, ultimately um, you know, increasing the return on investment you, um, you make there. Finally, I wanted to um, wrap off with an example from um, a recent implementation with a company called Huddle. Uh, they're a technology company uh, based in the UK. Um, important to know they had a lot of customer facing employees, I think 150 in total, about 80% of those uh, were customer facing, be it sales or, uh, or consulting. Um, the other important thing to note is they wanted something quick to roll out because they were internationally expanding at the time. Um, so something that um, Debbie, uh, their financial controller, who was spending, you know, a week of a working month um, processing their uh, paper-based receipts and not being able to control and, and ultimately not being able to push back when a, an expense item is is um, you know, it contravenes the, the policy. Um, so she needed something that would be well adopted by um, by the end users, the salespeople, uh, 
she wanted something that would work very nicely with the corporate credit cards they'd already issued. They were uh, using American Express at the time. They wanted something that would play very nicely with the their finance package as well. So um, they so given that they were kind of international, given that they needed something that was kind of easy to use and quick to roll out, uh, they, they they started working with Concur, and within 24 hours of receiving back their uh, their requirements, the policy um, information uh, to configure into Concur. Because we have um, HMRC best practice templates pre-configured, it's almost a plug and play and we can get you um, get you up and running within two weeks on average. That's the, the average implementation time um, with our small, uh, small and mid-sized businesses in the UK. So, you know, it rolled out very quickly. Um, it was a very quick kind of time to value. The there wasn't any, uh, you know, extended sort of project to talk of. It was a um, you know, a known challenge, uh, sort of a way of addressing that challenge without the rigmarole of having to, uh, you know, implement a um, you know kind of a lengthy sort of project. Um, the business absolutely loved it. You know, the the sales team quickly picked it up. It was, you know, like I saw uh, showed you earlier, a very kind of consumer grade experience, which meant it was very easy to use. They liked using it, um, and the net effect is that the financial controller saves seven days a month from. Um, having to process all those expenses um, herself. Um, she was viewed um, by the business ultimately as an enabler, giving a, um, a, a platform and tool and technology that not only saved the sa uh, salespeople's uh, sort of time, but also reduced the costs, made the costs very visible um, to all the kind of stakeholders involved with that. Um, and you know, it had all the benefits of, of VAT we claim uh, we covered earlier. So that's um, that's kind of overall, um, you know, a, a nice kind of overview of Kinko. I'd, I'd love to, um, if if there was kind of further interest, um, arrange sort of one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions where we can kind of dive into specific areas of interest. Jonathan, um, yeah, were there uh, any questions? Yeah, I, I well, we've had two or three questions as we went along. Please feel free, guys, if while you're on the call, to answer other questions if you have them. Um, one of the questions was in terms of business rules. Um, could you give some examples in terms of the, the nature of the business rules? So uh, the sorts of rules that you can build in, how rigid they can be. Um, for instance, I know some organizations have uh, food allowances, um, mileage allowances, things of that nature. How, how rigid those uh, business rules can be? Yeah, so the, it's a very configurable platform. Uh, we have a standard sort of implementation um, document which would kind of ask for your requirements I you know we tend to find that all the time that there might be per diem um, allowances that you'd give to employees um, there might be um, you know different approval lines based on the value or the type of expense claim so you know there can be quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of uh, intricacies when it comes to expense policy and we can you know configure that um, you know, configure that into uh, concur um, I suppose the, the other important thing to note as well is that typically we, we, we find that um, the cost centers, projects and, and clients and, and if you're a consulting organization that might be rebilling expenses to customers, that can also be configured within uh, Concur and, and ultimately reported in the back end per client or per project or, or per business unit or cost center. So it's a very configurable um, platform. Okay, um, this one's a leading question. Small, medium, stroke, large enterprise solution? Question mark. Sure. Yeah, it's um, you know, and I, I totally kind of see this, and and we used to be viewed as a you know big enterprise solution, and it it really does feel like something that is only suited to big businesses, and we certainly do have um, a lot of big businesses using it. However, you know, I sit um, firmly in the small business team. We work with companies that process ten expense claims and above a month. The beauty of um, you know cloud solutions is that from a pricing standpoint, um, you know they scale 
um, on a uh, user or uh, sort of activity basis, so you only pay what you consume. Um, there's no setup or implementation, so there's no upfront financial risk or cost your end, um, but you still have all the kind of capability of a you know enterprise grade solution. So very much a small business um, solution, and, and you know, in fact, that's kind of why you know why we partner with Advantage. Okay, um, one question which has just popped up, which is possibly related to the comment you just made authorizations so um, if one of my sales team completes their expenses it comes to me as a, as a first point of call but there's obviously business there appears to be business rules in there that say um, if it's over a thousand pound yes you can go to sales manager for approval but then you need to go to the, the business unit director because of the value yeah yeah that's totally right um, so you could you could sort of associate a, a, a approval kind of line, you know, even if you were, um, you know, one of the sort of typical examples is what happens to an approval chain if the uh, the approver is away on holiday. So you're able to set up, you know, backup approvers, um, set up a different sort of workflow of that approval process if, um, you know, the, the, the extent or sort of value of the claim is, is over a certain amount. Okay. Uh, final question, which I didn't I decided not to answer during the actual session, was how did you manage to get the cop thorn in Slough for eighty odd pounds a night? But I didn't. Think, <laughs> I didn't think that was that was necessarily relevant. Um, that's all I the think, questions. I think they, they tend to give away the rooms there. <laughs> all right, okay. Um, that was all the questions um, that we had. That was a really good session. Um, obviously, Jonathan's got his contact details on there. Mine are on there as well. Uh, if you're an existing client, you've got your account manager. I'll notify them of the attendees after the event so that they so if you get in touch they'll know what it's regarding um, but other than that any other questions please feel free to send Jonathan or myself uh, the questions thanks for your time Jonathan I know it's very difficult to talk for 45 minutes to nobody in particular um, so, uh, so well done on that um, this really appreciate setting it up as well thank you Matt that's right this uh, this webinar will also be um, on our YouTube channel so you'd be very welcome to visit the YouTube channel um, after the event should you want to share that with anybody and let them have a look at the, the product as well. But uh, I'll wrap up there. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, thanks very much for attending, guys, and hope to speak soon. Thank you.